What is up, JJ Buckets viewers? I am joined by a guest for the first time in ages. What is up, Warwich? Hey, JJ, thank you for having me on. It's been a long time since we have collabed. It has been a really long time since we've collabed, and honestly, it is long overdue to do another one of these, and so I am super excited. Obviously, you folks have seen today's thumbnail. We're going to be looking at Raptors players, so the idea here today is, obviously, a shakeup is very much so in the cards, uh, whether it happens now, whether it happens in the offseason, but obviously for this thought experiment, we're looking at this deadline, so we are going to look at the Raptors core and basically talk about if we're gonna you know move one of these guys where do we want to see them move based on the return that the Raptors could get back obviously just right out of the gate Scotty's not obviously in this discussion because that's probably the only guy that's untouchable like we're gonna talk OG Ananobi especially with the rumors right now I feel like that one's very topical we'll talk Fred we'll talk Gary Trent Jr and we'll even touch upon Pascal potentially as well uh, yeah, that's essentially what we're going to be doing today. I also just want to preface this conversation with I have been sick for the last few days. So if you hear it in my voice, if you see me chugging OJ, if you see me blowing my nose, mind your own business. <laughs> this is the only time that uh, we could get together for a collab. So I was not going to let a sickness get in the way of that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, before we fully hop into things here, obviously, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button for me, head over to the Warge port as well. Make sure you subscribe to him as, as well. He puts out way more content than I do and he's arguably the way better YouTuber anyway. So uh, go and hit subscribe on him. And other than that, let's hop into the video, right? So today let's, let's kick things off of OG Ananobi. I feel like just because he's been like at the forefront of so many Raptors trade rumors recently, Warch, if OG Ananobi gets traded somewhere, where would you like to see him get traded based on the return that you think the Raptors could get back? Um, I'm leaning towards the Pelicans. The Pelicans not only have a lot of young players that I personally like, they also have a couple of first round picks that are going to mean a lot to the Toronto Raptors. And we know that they have that Lakers pick. Now, the likelihood that we actually get that for OG Ananobi may be difficult because, look, if we're going to be asking for someone like Dyson Daniels, we're going to be asking for some of their young guys you do have to realize that the Pelicans aren't just going to throw in everything you want. So it's going to be one or the other, just like how we saw with the Kyle Lowry sign and trade. I know that was a completely different situation, but like you've got to realize usually as a starting point of any trade, you have to ask for one thing and then the trade kind of gets built around that. So if you're asking for da Dyson Daniels, I'm not saying you can't have picks in there. I just truly believe that. I don't know if you'll get that Lakers pick. You'll probably get future first round picks undoubtedly for OG and Anobi. I just think the Pelicans have such an attractive offer that very few teams around the NBA can actually match. Yeah, so I actually have the Pelicans on here as well for the uh, OG Anobi section. Obviously, for a lot of the reasons you've mentioned, and uh, for anybody that watches my channel or has watched my channel before and has seen my video on the perfect trade partner for the Raptors, you'll know I was talking about the Pelicans in that video. So I very much so agree with you there. An interesting team that I also want to throw in here as well I don't necessarily like them better than the Pelicans but similar intrigue and a bit of a sleeper here so the Oklahoma City Thunder right so OG is young enough to fit into their plans they're not that far off from a playoff spot this year so I think this one would probably be a little unlikely but at the uh, or at least on the more unlikely side. But at the same time, if the Thunder, you know, decide that they want to accelerate the timeline a little bit, obviously they have about like what half of the league's first round picks right now. So they could definitely throw the draft capital at you and maybe like a young player, but in all likelihood, probably the main selling point is going to be the draft capital. And if you're sitting there in Toronto shoes, there's probably a lot worse packages you you can get than what OKC would have to offer. Obviously, we've heard the Knicks a lot as well. The Knicks offer would be fine in particular because, you know, if you're getting first round picks for the from the Knicks, obviously they look good now, but I don't necessarily trust that the Knicks aren't going to be a terrible organization again in a few years. So uh, <laughs> I wouldn't hate it. I wouldn't hate having a New York's first round pick, especially if it's unprotected in a given year down the line. But I think I have a little more intrigue with OKC and then I think I completely agree with you on the Pelicans thing. I think that is the ideal trade partner if we're talking about OG and Anobi. And JJ, just before we move on to the next player, actually, just as you were saying that, I thought you were actually going to see the Pacers as well because OG and Anobi is from there. 
Benedict Mathurin. And I know it's a very unlikely they give him up for OG and Anobi, but if the Pacers do want OG, firstly, I'm starting, I'm using that as a starting point. Again, this is probably the most unrealistic trade <laughs> you'll ever hear me mention, but I'm I'm thinking something like Miles Turner and Benedict Mathurin. Like you get your center right there and you get a young player, potential rookie of the year. Again, I know it's not going to happen. The Pacers will not give that up. There's no doubt about that, but that would be a pretty nice return for OG. That would be a fantastic return for OG, and I would do that in a heartbeat. I just don't know if the Pacers would have given the fact Absolutely. that they're a young team, obviously, and kind of looking towards the future. Although, I mean, they've obviously been decent this year, but with the Halliburton injury, they've now slipped back outside the playoff uh, picture. So yeah. that would be a tough one. Uh, so next one, moving on to Toronto's number one most wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Fred Van Vliet. Uh obviously I say that because uh let's call a spade a spade. A lot of Raptors fans have really took to hating on Fred Van Vliet this year. So let's theoretically make people's dreams come true. If Fred Van Vliet is leaving, I think one of the interesting teams that we have seen linked, uh, more so because in my mind, when I think of a trade destination for Fred Van Vliet, I think of a contender that's looking to add like a third star. But on the other hand, we've actually heard Orlando tossed into the mix with Fred Van Vliet, which I think is really interesting uh, that they would want to take Freddie. And respectfully, I, you know, if they want to take Freddie, take him. I think you can probably get as good of a package from Orlando as you could from anybody when it comes to Fred Van Vliet. Obviously, you know, there's going to be discussion when it comes to the protection of first round picks there because Orlando is not a particularly good team right now either. Uh, but they have some young guys as well that could really help out your bench and, you know, the depth on this team that you could pry away from them. And potentially, if you want to talk to him about somebody like, a, you know, Mo Bamba or maybe a Cole Anthony, either one of those players would be fantastic to get in a return for Fred Van Vliet if the intention is just not to pay him in the offseason. So I would not hate that one whatsoever. Um, yeah, I, I really like them as well. I was thinking through when you mentioned contending teams. Um, again, I, I truly believe like the Lakers are a good trading partner, not because I think they have a lot of assets, but they're one of those teams that you could potentially make a three team deal. Again, it's going to be a little bit complicated. We know that Russell Westbrook contract is a big fat contract that's sitting there. And maybe they can shift that to a team that can use that salary to shut it and then send us a first round pick and then send them maybe again. That's probably asking for too much, but Maybe that third team sends us something. There is it. Obviously, you'd have to have a lot of moving parts around. But besides the Lakers, I do think the Magic will be a good one. I'm actually going to give you another one. The Washington Wizards. Um, they have been apparently rumored. I could be wrong. I believe they were rumored in uh, the services of Fred Van Vliet. They could be an interesting one. Danny Nvidia. I really like him. I know he's a, he's probably realistically only ever going to be a role player. He's I believe six eight six nine. He's a good passer. He can rebound. He's a smart high IQ player. So that's a, that could be a starting point. Again, I know they don't have a lot of good young players that you could target from there, but their first round picks would be really attractive. I think Washington is one of those desperate teams that may just, let's be honest, like they could make a desperation move because we know Bradley Beal has been rotting away in Washington for, I mean, was it eight, nine years now? I don't even know what year it is anymore because, you know, every year we hear about trade rumors, but I think they're, they could be one of the dark horse teams to keep your eye on. But I'd have to agree with you. Orlando Magic definitely have a lot of moving parts they can definitely provide the Raptors and they not only provide the Raptors with good parts. I think that one of the things they can do is fill a lot of positional needs. Like they can acquire good role players from Orlando magic, potentially Mo Bamba. I know a lot of people don't like him. He could be a center. You'd probably build around. So. Yeah, I think uh, I kind of liked the suggestion of um, Washington that you had as well in particular, because let's be honest. I mean, it's not like the wizards are particularly good at developing these young guys. So I think, whatever sample size you get, especially from a lot of these forwards, I feel like they just yep. have not been particularly great at that whatsoever. Like, you know, obviously Rui just got traded and everybody, or not everybody, like a lot of people are talking about, oh, you know, this guy's been the same guy pretty much since he's come into the league. It's like, yeah, but is that as big of a reflection on him or is it a reflection on the organization? Now, obviously you can talk about the fact that Nick Nurse does not enjoy playing as young guys this year or really at all he likes to run his starters into the ground so is Toronto really a great situation for development at the moment conversation for another day but I do think a guy like Denny I'm not even gonna butcher the last name right now would be a potentially interesting fit in Toronto I think he's got a really fun skill set he just 
needs a situation, quite frankly, that's not Washington to try and develop it. Yeah. And as long as he's there, he's not going to be much in this league, respectfully. Um, yeah. So that would be cool. So that would be cool. I'm with you on that one. But I think me and you are on the same page that Orlando is in all likelihood kind of the best one there. Yeah. So moving on to Gary Trent Jr. Now, this is one that I would lean in the direction of I actually do think Gary Trent Jr. is probably here for the foreseeable future based on recent rumors, especially in particular because obviously the OG rumors being so prominent now, like if they're moving OG and that salary is off the books, I think there's a much bigger likelihood that you're actually going to be willing to pony up for a decent offer for Gary Trent Jr. So wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't go anywhere, but if he does go somewhere, and it's a team you've already mentioned. I would actually think the Lakers are probably a fairly good candidate. I think Gary fits so perfectly beside LeBron James and beside Anthony Davis that it's <laughs> like it's uncanny. It's <laughs> like genuinely, he is the perfect like upper tier role player. Like I don't want to call him a role player, but like, but I also don't want to call him a third star. So. I guess the perfect starter just to have alongside those two guys that hand and glove fit. And quite frankly, I'm not asked in that scenario. I'm not asking just for one first round pick. I want both those picks unprotected that the Lakers can offer. And if that's doable, I think it's not the worst package in the world that you can get, but obviously I do think Gary Trent Jr. is probably staying, but if he is moving somewhere, I think the Lakers probably make a lot of sense. So, Gigi, I'm just going to quickly ask you, you think Gary Trent Jr. is actually staying like the Raptors won't try to shop him around or quick question? Uh, I know we're going a little bit off topic here, but I do th- I, like I think all of these guys realistically are available at the right price. But I do believe I made that video not too long ago talking about the most likely Raptors uh, to get traded. And I touched upon this in my video last week as well, where, you know, Gary Trent Jr. I think has actually dropped down that list. I, again, so I think they take calls for sure, but I think there's probably a little more hesitancy, excuse me, to move him now than there would have been maybe a few weeks ago, given the OG situation, given that, you know, maybe, yeah, Fred is at the door too. I think there's a better chance given his age and kind of the timeline of where Gary Trent Jr. fits, you know, alongside Scotty, that he might actually be here for the foreseeable future. Obviously, Gary seems like he likes Toronto, so it's a good fit in that regard as well. So again, I think they take the calls, but I think in all likelihood, he's probably here past the deadline. If he's not, though, I want the Lakers picks. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, I can I can definitely see the Lakers making a move, something like that, and maybe throwing someone like a Chris Boucher, and then uh, Westbrook goes to somewhere else, like a third team, and then we, you know, get the picks, and we maybe get some assets in return as well. The question I get to quickly ask you as well, I'm having a cloudy moment. My my brain's very foggy here. I just woke up from a half for those who don't know. <laughs> but uh, remind me again, which teams seem to be interested in Gary Trent Jr.? Because I'm mixing up all sorts of players and teams right now i'm trying to go through the list of teams and i know besides the lakers i'm trying to think of other there, teams i remember there was a fairly long list for gary Trent jr i wish i had the article that i put into one of my videos way back when uh yeah. but i know teams like the knicks were interested the warriors the heat the suns maybe were they the interested? S- i can't remember if the suns were in there i feel like there's a decent chance they were but don't quote me on that one i remember last time i looked at it there were like five teams i think we've heard like maybe one or two names as well obviously with gary he's a guy that you know you can plug and play into a lot of situations quite easily so yeah yeah Yeah, i'm I'm trying to think of the list of teams and look i I don't think a lot of top contenders in the eastern conference like you think of 76ers bucks celtics nets they probably can't really don't need his service not because they don't want him but they have those positions filled out I'm probably going to have to go with you as well. If again, I'm going to go and I'm going to beat on the Pelicans this video, but if if the Pelicans seem to be interested, man, they could offer you like I'm I'm, I'm I know I'm getting crazy here, but Dyson Daniels is such a good fit with the Raptors, honestly. That would be such a good starting point. Again, unlikely that maybe they might not include him in that trade, especially maybe for Gary Trent Jr., but I'm looking at the Pelicans, maybe the Suns as well. If you could try and throw in a little bit maybe more salary, Cam Birch, for example, uh, maybe Chris Boucher maybe ask for more than just DeAndre. Maybe you could do something like that. I know the Raptors need it. And I know, look, I know he's overpaid, but the Raptors desperately need a center. And maybe 
with all of the options on the trade market being so expensive, he's probably one of the few that you could realistically pry away from a team. Yeah, DeAndre Ayn's an interesting one again. Like, and it's for the exact reason that you said he's so overpaid. Mm. <laughs> like, man, if DeAndre wasn't making the kind of money that he was making, like it would be such a more attractive potential trade partner for Toronto. But yeah. at 30 plus million a year, I don't really know if I personally like DeAndre Ayn that much for that money, given what he's shown to date. Now, obviously, player progression is not linear. Like a lot can change given a new environment like Toronto, he could become a much better player, but uh, I, I don't know. I personally, I don't love the idea of Aiden. Obviously, like you said, Toronto needs a center. I don't think that's a secret, but, and quite frankly, the one that was the best fit just signed an extension with the Pacers. So he's not going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> apparently, apparently I'm going to cut you off there. Apparently I was watching a lot of uh, videos around it. Uh, YouTube based on NBA, they said he could still be treated this season. So it's not there. They made it so it's it's a deal that secures them in case they're not able to find the right partner. But apparently he's still trade eligible. Interesting. So, yeah. Get them off, get them on the phone immediately. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now just to move on to the last name here. Pascal Siakam. Now, here's the thing. I'm just gonna get this right off the bat. I if I had, if I was a betting man, which kind of am, kind of I'm not, depending on the day. <laughs> um, Pascal Siakam's on this team, past the roster. I don't think, in all likelihood, just looking around the league, based on who's, based on who's buying and what they have to offer, I don't think there's a team out there that has the kind of, you know, haul that you would probably want for Pascal. But. You know, just for the thought experiment, because again, like I think everybody in theory is available at the right price. If Pascal were to get traded, which is a massive if, and again, massive if, if I had to take a stab at it, I would probably say Portland. It's the only one that realistically makes sense to me. Portland keeps banging that drum of we're still building around Dame, we're still retooling this roster around yeah. Dame. So, why not get him a running mate that's quite frankly going to play off him extremely well, in my opinion. And the contracts aren't too hard to make work. You have young talent, like a, you know, certain shade and sharp that uh, you can take back, obviously plus picks that you're going to ask for from Portland. It's not the worst situation. Again, I don't really think there is a good situation out there at the moment to get Pascal, but it's not the worst one. If you were going to move him to, get um i'm gonna go on an interesting uh team here and i'm actually gonna go and say the grizzlies um this was again i don't know how much truth there is to rumors because you hear them all the time but grizzlies could be a team that could let's be honest i mean it would be an odd fit though. i'm not gonna deny it him and john Morant, they both live in the paint but it would be a really nice pickup for the grizzlies i think but if i'm the raptors i'm asking for jaron jackson jr i'm obviously plus more as well so like picks and some other young guys as well i think that could be an interesting return and I mean, Jerry Jackson Jr., that fit. I mean, we need a center. I don't know if you're agreeing with me or you're hard disagreeing with me. I'm not saying just Jerry Jackson. I'm saying Jerry Jackson plus more and picks. But Jerry Jackson Jr. is, sorry, JJ, I'm going to go on a quick rant here. Jerry Jackson Jr. would fit so nicely with the Raptors because he's mobile. He's a great shot blocker. I believe he can hit his threes pretty well as well. So, I mean, if you're to acquire a good young center, he's, he's someone that you would get for Pascal. Now, I love the idea. I just don't think that Memphis is going to give up Jared Jackson Jr. in that trade. You like, think so? For Pascal? All NBA? I No, just quite frankly, given Memphis and where they're at, I don't think... I think Ja and Jaren are pretty close to untouchable unless, you know, somebody's trading them like a top 5 to 10 player. Like, I don't think they're going to include Jaren Jackson in everything, especially considering... <laughs> how bad their defense looked at the beginning of the year without Jaron Jackson Jr. He's arguably the defensive player of the year at this point. And he does so much for that team on that side of the ball. I think he's maybe not a hundred percent untouchable, but pretty close to untouchable. So I'm with you on the fact that I would absolutely love it. He'd be a fantastic fit here in Toronto, but I don't think Memphis parts with him. I quite frankly, I don't think between um, John, 
Jaron and Desmond Bain, I think Memphis would be incredibly reluctant to move any of those three unless it's absolutely like the perfect offer for them. Um, but I will say one thing: they're ha- if they're acquiring Pascal Siakam and they're, he's obviously a power forward, you're going to have to get rid of one of Jaron Jackson Jr. or Stephen Adams. And I don't think we're we're definitely not taking a package built around Stephen Adams again for Pascal Siakam. So again, it's just hypothetically speaking. You could be right, but I don't know. Like, if you're acquiring a twenty, a top fifteen, top twenty player in the NBA, I think Jaron Jackson Jr. is a must. But again, let's see, let's see. I wanna, I want I'm very curious to hear what other people think, guys. Make sure to leave your thoughts on this. I'm very curious because I know, obviously, I'm not trading Pascal Siakam away for nothing. Um, not only am I not even trading him just like for like two or three first round picks, I think you have to acquire some sort of young players or someone that is very established, like Jaron Jackson Jr. So, I agree. Like like I was saying at the beginning of this section, if Pascal's going anywhere, he needs to command a really good package from the other side. Personally speaking, I don't see a lot of those looking around at the market leading up to this deadline. But you never know. Maybe somebody comes out of nowhere with like a ridiculous seven draft pick offer. <laughs> and quite frankly, if, Ru- if Rudy Gobert is getting seven, Pascal's getting 10. <laughs> I was just about to say, man, if, if they can get that much for Rudy, we got to find a team that can give us just as much, if not more. But uh, I think that more or less wraps us up today. So folks, you have heard all of our kind of ideas on where some of these potential names could end up. Do you feel like we're missing something really obvious If we are, leave it in the comment section below. And that's pretty much going to be us for today. Once again, thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe to this channel and leave a like if you already haven't. And to check out the Warch Report for a lot more regular content and a a lot more high quality content that you're going to get on this channel. He's great. And thank you again for coming on. It's been a while and I've missed you, man. I really have. Well, thank you for having me on. It's always a pleasure, JJ.